So class, um, in this video, I'll be talking about one of the pathologies of the female reproductive system, and that is polycystic ovarian syndrome. So the PCOS, I feel almost obligated to talk about this because it affects about 10 percent, you know, or could be higher of women of reproductive age. So this is actually the most common hormonal disorder among, among women um, in this age group. Um, and oftentimes um, the symptoms appear as they're going through puberty and sometimes they do not realize they have PCOS until later when they're trying to um, have a baby or when they're going to their first gyne gynecology visit. So I do like to educate uh, healthcare providers so that you're aware of the signs. So some of the defining characteristics of PCOS are the, there is a hyperandrogenism, so too much androgen in the blood, okay? So that's gonna present a number of the problem you will see here, which is excess hair growth on the face and the back and the neck and the chest but also hair loss on top. So a lot of people think hair loss, um, hair on the body is the same as hair on top of your head. That's actually not the same. So hair loss on top when there's too much androgen. So it's called androgenic alopecia, okay? Also acne, unusual amount of acne on the face, on the chest, on the back. And then of course, uh, and that's related to the hyperandrogenism. And because the hormones are disrupted, um, there is irregular or missing menstrual cycle, okay? And that can lead to a post polycystic ovary and infertility, okay? Um, so you don't have to have all three of these characteristics to have PCOS. A lot of PCOS patients actually don't have a polycystic ovary. So that's kind of um, different, right, you think. But there are um, reasons why um, not everyone has PCOS. But the defining characteristics are the hyperandrogenism and um, the irregular menstruation. So I hear this a lot from younger um kids and stuff and they'll say, oh, no, it's no big deal. I only menstruate three times a year. It's great. Well, that's actually a sign that there is something going on. If they're not menstruating within 21 to 41 days and there's something going on, you should always check the hormones to make sure that that something is taken care of and doesn't become a long-term problem. Because there is an increased risk of a number of issues that are associated with um, PCOS and that should be taken care of. So I do want to um, explain the PCOS. It's, it is kind of complicated, but let's just simplify it by looking at what's going on. So this is the steps, but I'm also going to kind of, I'm going to draw it out with you and see how if that helps you understand. So if you think about a normal versus um, and PCOS. Okay, so Right, right now, we, um, we already learned that the normal, you'll go through the normal menstrual cycle. So there's going to be a normal cycle, normal menstruation, um, things like that. In PCOS patients, um, this is irregular, right? So what caused it? So there's a number of things that happen. So one thing you want to think about is that there is something related to genetics, obesity, and sedentary lifestyle. So this is very similar to what we learned in diabetes. So what is going on with PCOS, we know, is that the sedentary lifestyle, the obesity, and things like that is causing an elevated insulin resistance. So there's an insulin resistance, so there's an elevated insulin hormone. And for reasons we don't fully understand, there's a, an upset of the LH to FSH ratio. So LH, say for every one FSH, there is three LH or more, okay? So that kind of causes a problem. So if you look at normal, let's draw out this on a graph. In normal, we've been studying this a bunch and we learned that, we looked at it and we have seen that we have FSH going like this, right? That's FSH. And then we see that with LH, we will have it pretty much here is where the one-to-one, -one, they're one-to-one, -one, and then it spikes up at day 14 on a 28-day cycle and flatten off. So that's LH. So in this case, we have a one 
to one ratio. In a one to three ratio, what that looks like is we have FSH being lower, but also the LH being three times higher. Okay, so you have this ratio LH to FSH. This graph is, end up, sorry, is a little bit smaller than here, but if you were to draw it, uh, the LH is three times higher than normal, okay? So if you were comparing, the LH will be up here. So in PCOS, let me just attend that. So the PCOS patient, it'll be like that. But not ovulation level, it'll be high like that, okay? Maybe I drew it a little too high. Let's draw it more like here. So it'll be like here, so the PCOS. Okay, so what does that do? The, the, the two hormones that we have elevated are insulin and um, LH. So these two hormones, what it's going to do is it's going to cause an increase in androgen. So this is where the hyperandrogen comes from. Remember, if you go back and look at what LH does in the production of estrogen, LH is actually really important. So let me remind you for the production here, LH to LH receptor of testosterone and androgen. So if you make too much of this, this ends up going into the blood. Okay, whereas it should have been converted to estrogen. So what we're seeing in PCOS is this, because we have a high levels of LH, leading to high levels of testosterone, which ends up going into the blood. Okay, so that's what we're seeing in our PCOS patient here. So what else happens is that the FSH, because it's lower, right here, like you see the lower, you have a decrease in follicle development. So what happens is that the follicles will arrest at this intra or pre antral follicle stage. So there is no ovulation because we don't have a mature follicle and they, those arrested follicle become um, polycystic. So this is due to the low FSH. So you can trace back and compare the notes in this two slides and going back and forth and figure out what's going on. But the low follicle development means you have no mature follicle. And no mature follicle means no ovulation, no menstruation, no, no corpus luteum, all of that. Okay, so that's kind of the idea of PCOS. You want to go back and forth between these ideas and compare the notes and also watch a video on YouTube that I have about PCOS. Um, so hopefully you learn and think about what um, it is that is happening to PCOS. Um, some of the things, what well, are some therapies? Some of the therapy is to help the, with the insulin resistance. Taking birth control pills would decrease the androgen production because the, the birth control pill will arrest the follicle to stop the follicle from making um, the testosterone. So that helps with the symptom. But at the same time, there is lifestyle changes that there are studies that found that increasing activity, increasing um, the weight loss will decrease PCOS symptoms and, and possibly even reverse it. Okay, I hope you learned a lot. Let me know if you have any questions and we'll look at the next video, which is gonna be the lab for birth control pills.